this time, I'd like to call this meeting of the Board of Chosen Freeholders to order. Please rise. Please say in your prayers at this time uh, a prayer for Adrian Check, who is the brother of the County Clerk Elaine Freeman, who passed away this past week. Move to the flag, Dennis. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The notice of this meeting, pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 10, has been complied with and shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Roll call, please. Freeholder Barrett. Here. Freeholder Delina. Here. Freeholder Polos? Here. Freeholder Rios? Here. Freeholder Scott? Here. Freeholder Valenti? Here. Freeholder Director Rufano? Here. Uh, reports of freeholders, Freeholder Carol Barrett? I know this will upset everyone, but Freeholder Barrett has no report tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Freeholder. <laughs> <laughs> freeholder Delina? I'm here. <laughs> you have any reports? Yeah, I got a, re I got a long report, so be ready. Be comfortable. <laughs> I would like to write the public meeting on Thursday, March 18th from the Cultural Heritage Commission announced that all workshops are filled for this weekend and the following weekend. We are greatly appreciated the public support and we have a waiting list for craft shops and for the kids' Easter workshop. Please, everybody waiting on the list, please call anyone and let us know uh, that you will, be able, will not be able to attend. Again, we will thank anyone for supporting our program. Secondly, we will learn that Ann Ashkanis has been given the key Lecture at the State New Jersey History Issue Conference in Trenton on March 26. Mm, now my report nice. from the parks. I would like to bring as the board's attention that the contractor is on the site on Johnson Park and has started work on extensive renovation covering the area between two, to, two main ponds. The project is expected to be ready by the spring of 2011. The park will remain open during that period. I'd like to note that the family ice skating rink in Roosevelt Park, which is scheduled to close on the season on March 28th, has been closed as of today. And th we decided to close it a bit earlier this year because the project temperature made it impossible to maintain the ice surface. The rink will be covered with a roller skating rink surface, and the roller skating season will begin on April 16th. Remember that, girls. <laughs> full support program that we are accepting applications for our COVID uh, softball league, which will start on April 15th. Games will be played Thursday at either at Thomas Edison Park or Ratton Bay Waterfront Park. Team applications are being accepted. First comes, first serve. On our so uh, Sunday men's softball league, we will starting on May 28th, and, and we will have 18 teams to participation. One last note, our winter basketball tournament wrapped up last night. I would like to thank all the teams that participated in this event. I'm finished. Thanks. Thank you, Freeholder. Freeholder Polis. Thank you. Uh, a couple items I'm going to go to the podium. Good evening, everyone. This past week, Middlesex County unveiled its sustainability website. It was a project that began 18 months ago. Uh, Middlesex County, I'm pleased to say, is the first county in New Jersey to develop a sustainability plan. The purpose behind this plan is to develop a, a set of goals that the county will endeavor to accomplish, covering all areas of economic development, health, the environment, uh, education, housing, and so forth. Some of you, particularly, there's a lot of students in the room today, you may have heard about green technology and green energy and so forth. I don't know how many of you have heard the word sustainability before, but uh, as green to some extent starts to phase out, you'll start to hear the word sustainability a lot more. Um, the basic definition of sustainability is, is that we as a society today should make sure that the actions that we take doesn't inhibit future generations from being able to take the actions that they wish to take. In other words, we need to keep our environment as clean as it is today, if not better, make sure the economy is stable, that there's good housing, good education, and good opportunities for employment. Those are some of the goals of the sustainability plan that we established and just unveiled this past week. It took 18 months to develop it. 
with a series of stakeholders, including municipal leaders, mayors, council people, and organizational people from around the county, uh, state representatives. We had people involved from business, our large utility companies, uh, as well as freeholders from throughout New Jersey, all of whom wanted to see what we were going to develop and how we could actually develop a plan. Uh, so we're pleased that the work that we did not only became a model for us, but also a model for other counties throughout New Jersey. It's once again nice that Middlesex County was at the lead of this development. We did it in partnership with the New Jersey State Sustainability Institute, which is affiliated with Rutgers University, and unveiled the plan, as I said, this past last week at the Rutgers Cooperative Extension Services Building, which is the home of uh, Middlesex County's first solar project that we installed just a few short years ago. Um, so apropos of that announcement last week about our sustainability initiative, and I should mention that the work that we did is not the typical plan that gets written and goes onto a shelf and collects dust. And we always, we've, I'm sure we're all aware of those kinds of plans. This is a live uh, um, plan that is going to be interactive. There is a website that's been developed, again, the first of its kind in the state. You'll be able to access it through our easy to remember website address, which is mcset.com, mcset.com. And as you access that website, you'll not only be able to access our sustainability plan, but also see all the other green initiatives that Middlesex County is involved in, from biodiesel fuel and hybrid cars to solar technology to helping our communities become green and our schools as well. So again, apropos of that announcement last week, tonight we're announcing uh, the awards for a contest that we began a number of months ago. We've worked very closely with the Board of Public Utilities for the last five years or so. And in fact, I'm proud to say that Middlesex County was recognized by the Board of Public Utilities in 2007 as a clean energy leader for all of New Jersey. And we all as residents of this county should be very proud of that. We approached the BPU with an idea uh, to get students involved. Many of you um, who are kind of, again, aware of the idea of green technology have probably seen on your utility bill the ability for you to be able to check off a box and buy clean energy. Uh, what that means is, is that that's kind of your contribution to making sure that we're becoming more sustainable in our country, uh, less dependent upon foreign oil. And by checking off that box, in fact, you are investing in things like solar, uh, wind technology, and all types of other means of creating um, energy for our country. It's a little more expensive on your bill, could run you another 2 to $4 a month on average, and many residents in the county have participated to do that. Well, we approached the BPU and asked them to give us some funding for a grant to be able to develop a public service announcement for our residents to see. We have worked with our schools on so many initiatives in the past very successfully, and we wanted to give our students an opportunity to develop their own unique PSA that we hopefully will be able to promote in our local cable channels, uh, at Rutgers University and through other venues to be able to get the message out about why it's important for our residents to purchase clean energy. This was paid for by a $9,700 grant that we received from the Board of Public Utilities, as I said, about a year or so ago. And the PSAs that we asked them to produce, uh, star in to some extent, direct and so forth, are 30-second public service announcement videos. They were judged by the director of the Sustainability Institute as well as individuals from the State Theater. The grant was done in partnership with the State Theater because of its nonprofit status, which is the way that we were able to obtain the grant. So we created a unique partnership there. Uh, as you know, the Clean Power Choice Program is a voluntary program. It was actually launched back in 2005. And again, it gives you an opportunity to buy clean power as opposed to that power, which is just um, uh, um, created through fossil fuels. All students tonight are going to receive a gift card, courtesy of the grant from the Board of Public Utilities. Uh, as well as certificates of participation, and those will go to all the schools, all the people who have participated. They'll be receiving some bags filled with some clean energy information and some, I call them tchotchkes, giveaways that the, I'm sure the students will find useful, and of course some more information that we'll be providing to them. We sent this out to high schools throughout the county. Uh, it was done in a very short time frame. Um, we do a public service announcement video for drunken driving, and we usually get about 17 or 18 schools to participate. But I will tell you that that's after about nine years of doing the program. Uh, this is our first year trying this. We had four schools step up, which I think is great for the first year of a program like this. Uh, unfortunately, and I say at the onset, we only have awards for three. But in our hearts, all four are winners because they participated. And everyone, regardless if you're a winner or not, will certainly receive a certificate of participation. And our heartfelt thanks for being part of the first year of this program. 
So uh, the awards tonight will be uh, for first place will be five hundred dollars. Second place is two hundred and fifty dollars, and third place is a hundred dollars to the schools again through the grant that was received from the BPU. And with that, I think I'd like to also before I, I go out, Jeff, why don't you come out and. Take a bow a second, please, because uh, Jeff Mayerowitz, I affectionately call him our green guy. He is the gentleman who's running this program. He's been involved with initiating all the green technology programs that we're doing in the county. I know he came to your schools and really worked hard to help cultivate this program. So Jeff, take a bow. You did a great job in making this work. Uh, I know you don't know who's won yet, so there's a little tension here. Um, is there a little tension? I hope so. A little anxiousness. Uh, we're going to start with third place first. Uh, and Jeff, as they say, I guess in the movies, roll the tape. Jack, do you think you can click those lights off on that side, or are they on this side? Oh, never mind. Now at the Academy Awards, this is when they would usually sing and dance, but since I can't do that, I'll, I'll have to think of something else to fill some time here. Um, in addition to all the green technology work that we've done and, and this innovation with the school, um, we're also going to be working on trying to develop information for our sustainability plan and bringing that to you. And here's Perth Amboy High School, our third place winner. Congratulations, Perth Amboy. I mean, I've always been there for you. Yeah, but you're polluting and you're gonna run out. We've had better throughout the years. I mean, we're not even I have work. pollution. I'm guaranteed to be here always. Okay, what about the price? You're used to our price. So you're sticking with us. Although it will take money to start up, we will be inexpensive and there for you always. Um, okay. I think I made my choice. Now you have a brighter future. The sun is always shining, the wind is always blowing, and the water is always flowing. Thank, thanks, Margaret. Uh, representing Perth Amboy High School, we have uh, the teacher who's in charge of this program, Mr. Mark Nibajoski. Uh Please come up, please. David um, Caceres, <laughs> Melissa Saban, and Adrena Gomez. Thank my students for coming up with this idea for the video. We had a lot of fun coming up with the idea for the, what message to say, um, how we we're going to plan out. We sort of took off on that Mac versus PC theme on the commercial there, and it was just a, a fun, enjoyable thing. And I'm glad I worked with these guys. I'm proud of them. Thank you. Okay, our second place winner, Colonia High School. Join me at the podium representing Colonial High School, uh, Ms. Chantal Grefter, the teacher, uh, Mansi San Sangi, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing it, Jia Wong, Tiffany Wong, and Sana Nassim.
Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for this opportunity. I think the, the students learned quite a bit. They were very enthusiastic about this uh, uh, project, and I'm very proud of them. Um, my principal says he already has the money spent, but um, it's going to the Ecology Club and perhaps work, uh, put money towards a greenhouse that we'd like to build on our property. So thank you again very much. All right, and last but not least, our first place winner. Middlesex High School. Smokestacks and smog are polluting the Earth's atmosphere continuously every day. But wind turbines and solar power is the future. The clean, green future. Clean Power Choice Program is helping to clean up New Jersey by giving you the chance to sign up to receive clean energy. Bring New Jersey back to the Garden State before the lights go out. Representing Middlesex High School, uh, Mr. Michael Quirk, the teacher, Kim Hutchins, Kelsey Sanford, TJ Griffin, Thomas Daniel, Daniel, I should say, and Robbie Wanthouse. Please come on up. Congratulations. <laughs> I'd just like to thank everybody here uh, at the county um, for creating this, you know, I'm always looking for new opportunities for my students who are video production students to test their craft and uh, I think they really did a good job with this and uh, thank you very much. Uh, in closing, again, I'd like to congratulate all the schools, the participants, uh, again, all four schools who participated. Oh, I know actually I have some bags down here which we're going to distribute to you in just a moment. Uh, I won't waste the uh, rest of the meeting time to do that, but you all, all the students will also be receiving this as well. Thank you, and it's our intention to take these messages and get them out to our local cable channels and be able to get, um, you know, some, some air time for it to try to promote clean energy in our county. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Freelder. <laughs> Deputy Director Rios. Thank you, Director. My report goes for uh, Rat and Bait Mental Health Center. I, was, uh, I took a tour and had a meeting with the staff there this past week, and it was a very enlightening uh, experience to go there and speak with the staff and realize that uh, and encourage them for the hard work that they do and dedicated work that they do for us. And especially in these uh, difficult times, our case workload has increased and uh, they've uh, been able to uh, deal with that challenge. This past weekend with all the rain that we experienced, our center had some uh, flooding problems, nothing too serious, but our maintenance staff was able to deal with it and it didn't uh, curtail our uh, operating hours and uh, we were able to provide our services for our clients. As far as my health report goes, County Health Department will hold our 2010 uh, Health Expo on uh, Saturday, April 17th from 1 to 5 p.m. at the Woodbridge Center Mall. It's a great day to come out and uh, see the different brochures and uh, different activities that are held throughout this health fair. Uh, services for adults include blood pressure screening and the H1N1 flu immunizations. Uh, as well as the opportunity to speak with different health uh, professionals about the different <coughs> programs that we offer. Our uh, health department's cancer coalition is sponsoring a colorectal cancer awareness campaign and events will be held on Tuesday, March 23rd at 7.30 p.m. at the Seventh-day Adventist 
uh, Church on 25 Division Street in New Brunswick, and Wednesday, March 25th at 11 a.m. at the Metuchen Senior, Set Senior Center, 35 Lincoln Avenue in Metuchen. Uh, obviously with this past uh, flooding and rain that we had this past weekend, uh, Everyone was notified from Middlesex Water Company. They issued a boil water advisory to all our residents and all restaurants served by Middlesex Water Company were notified and our inspectors to, uh, were notified by our inspectors to empty and sanitize their ice machines and use only bottled water for consumption until the advisory was lifted. Our H1N1 immunization will continue to be administered through April 29th on Thursdays between 1 p.m. and 2.30 p.m. at the Health Clinic on 596 Jersey Avenue, Suite B in New Brunswick. Tonight, the board will consider for the following, uh, um, the following agenda items, accepting a grant award in the amount of $1,869,000 from New Jersey Department of Health and Senior Services for our Special Child Health Services Early Intervention Program. Our college uh, just signed an articulation agreement with St. Peter's College in Jersey City that links the two schools, biotechnology programs. Middlesex students who graduate with a grade point average of 2.75 or better in biotechnology will be guaranteed admission into the St. Peter's Bachelor of Science Biotechnology program. Our uh, police chief for our uh, college uh, campus is uh, one of 10 finalists for the Campus Safety Director of the Year. The award is presented by Campus Safety Magazine, and the winner will be announced at the Campus Safety Conference on March 29th through the 31st. He's been a fine individual and always worked hard for our college security, and also he handled many uh, visits and was able to coordinate many visits by uh, many dignitaries, and it was always a secure environment. Our uh, uh, Pink Day, a program in which the Middlesex County College and Ocean County College basketball team supported breast cancer awareness was held <coughs> at our campus on February 17th to, again, to bring awareness towards breast cancer. Our uh, college is going to offer Biosciences Forum for high school students, a one-day forum designed to help high school students explore science on May 22nd. The program, which is free, is sponsored by Bio One, a consortium of industry organizations and colleges and universities and funded by the WIRED grant of the United States Department of Labor. We just had a green jobs graduation ceremony. It was an 11 week class at Middlesex County College called Electronics for Green Jobs and the graduation was February 3rd. The program trains students to repair and maintain different machines or equipment recycling machines, forklifts, emission controls, and it's funded by the New Jersey Department of Labor. Our uh, Rutgers Extension uh, 4-H Club is having a uh, breakfast with the bunnies, ages two and up, and it's gonna be held on March 27th, and it's a great day for the kids to come out and enjoy uh, the various things that are gonna be there, petting zoo, face painting, coloring station games for kids, many good things. And our 4-H uh, is a very active organization here in Middlesex County. And we have our summer exploration week, July 5th through the 9th. And that concludes my report, Director. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Director. Uh, Freeholder, Millie Scott. Thank you, Freeholder Director. Last week, I gave a press conference on the uh, completion of the upgrade of our 800 megahertz radio system. And what this system does, it, and it enables all of the um, 50 fire departments, 27 law enforcement agencies, and 58 EMS to talk directly to each other and to the county. And it also, throughout the county, we, years ago we had blind spots or where you couldn't hear, you couldn't receive so good from one walkie-talkie to another walkie-talkie. And this improves that. And this is all done at no cost to the municipalities. It was paid by Homeland Security money, a million dollars, and also from capital improvement money, four million dollars. And this is another initiative that uh, the county offers uh, municipalities. So the municipalities do not have to pay for this. 
And I want a couple people I'd like to thank, and one is um, Prosecutor Kaplan, Shira Spacuzzo, our emergency management person, Rory, Rory Zach, the local police departments, the fire departments, and EMS. And a special thanks to our fire marshal, Mike Gallagher, who made this all possible. And I say, Mike, and who's sitting out there tonight, thank you very much. Another report I have. Today, damage assessment teams from the Federal Emergency Management FEMA were in several municipal municipalities today evaluating the damage caused by the storms that hit the area this past weekend. They expect to remain in the county throughout this weekend, so they're going to be here all weekend, and uh, they started today. Damage totals will be forthcoming, but initial findings suggest the county and its municipalities suffered several million dollars in damage from high winds, flooding, and power outages. Initial findings also suggest almost over 1,000 homes were destroyed or flooded because of this damage. Among the hardest hit areas were the county's Old Bridge Waterfront Park, Raptor Bay Waterfront in Searville, South Amboy, Janellen, East Brunswick, Metuchen, Middlesex Borough, Old Bridge, Perth Amboy, Searville, South Amboy, South Brunswick, South Plainville, South River. And the county is steadily recovering from what is considered one of the worst storms to hit Middlesex County in decades. Electricity has been restored. The Middlesex County Water Company, which supplies water to 13 municipalities, lifted its boil water advisory. Utility and road crews have cleaned up fallen trees. And I know many of you sitting out there, either your house was damaged or you knew someone's property was damaged. And I want to say very uh, thank you to all the emergency response people that were out there over this weekend. And I also want to say to Rory Zach and John Ferguson, I know John Ferguson was put many hours in. And it's people like our volunteers that sometimes we don't give credit to that helps us all out. And again, I want to say thank you to them. Thank you. Thank you, Freeholder. Freeholder Blanquita Valente. Thank you, Freeholder Director. Uh, first of all, this evening I distributed to the Freeholder Board the Department of Senior Services annual report. Uh, and as you review this report, you will see that our department directly served a very high number of senior <laughs> residents, their caregivers, and some younger disabled individuals during the year. Approximately 55,000 people were individually assisted by our department in 2009, and that number represents 41% of all seniors residing in the county. For example, in, in our nutritional services, and as required by the Older American Act, the county senior meal program targets services to those in general in greatest social and economic need with particular attention to low-income individuals, minority individuals, and those at risk of institutional care. Uh, so that, uh, unfortunately, some counties were experiencing wait lists for meals, and some have cut back on the number of the meals delivered to individuals to be able to serve more of those in dire need. Fortunately, Middlesex County has not experienced these difficulties because of the ongoing support of the Board of Chosen Freeholders. Uh, more than 300,000 hot, nutritious meals were provided by the county meal program to almost 2,400 individuals in 2009. And with the federal civilian funds, IRA also helped to provide an additional 25,102 meals for 2,591 seniors who had not previously been assisted by this office. And we coordinated with a lot of our senior centers in the county. Uh, the Older Americans Act funding <coughs> from the department was also provided to several nonprofit entities to help address the nutritional needs of the county's older adults. And during 2009, the agencies providing nutritional services included quite a few. It's a long list, so I'm not going to read it. But I, I just wanted to um, let the freeholder board and the public know that this nutritional services from our Department of Aging or Senior Services has done a lot to help out many of our individuals that are elderly and in need. Uh, from the Department of Human Services, um, 
we don't have a lot of good news because as you know, there's been cuts in the budget made in Trenton. Uh, for example, the Department of, um, the Center for Hispanic Research and Development, unfortunately, is going to be wiped out, which means there's gonna be a number of smaller agencies in Middlesex County that are gonna lose their funding and close their doors. Uh, that's very unfortunate. Uh, but th this is the reality of what's going on in our economic um, state of, of affairs. Um, and it's not just New Jersey, it seems to be uh, countrywide. So um, if, if you hear any more of, of these unfortunate bad news, we will let you know. But as of now, so only the bigger agencies that serve the Hispanic uh, community are surviving because they had many other grants that they can work on. But that's a big cut, a tremendous big cut. And uh, I'm afraid that uh, there's another agency in Middlesex County who might go under, unfortunately. So uh, it's not a very <laughs> cheerful report, but I wanted to inform the Board of Freeholders of what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, Freeholder. Uh, as director, I, I have a few things to report. Uh, first, I was pleased to participate and speak at a press conference along with Congressman Alvio Ceres, Senator Joe Vitale, Mayor of Perth Amway, Wilda Diaz, uh, William Dressel from the New Jersey League of Municipalities. Uh, and the press conference was entitled Statewide United Census 2010 Awareness. It was held at the Perth Amboy Hospital. Uh, there were several elected officials. There were five freeholders from this board there supporting um, the census awareness. Uh, Assemblyman Coughlin was there and our county, Coughlin, I'm sorry, um, and our county clerk, Elaine Flynn. And the idea behind it was to make everyone aware of how important the census is in responding to the census. I've got mine and I responded already, mailed it back, because it impacts federal funding that we receive, that our communities receive in our county, that our county receives, that, that our state receives. So the more accurate numbers we have, it's better for us. So certainly I, I encourage everyone to, to fill out your census form and, and mail it back. Don't ignore it, please. Um, I got a, a nice letter from Roosevelt Care Center and it, it commends uh, Freeholder Delina's department, uh, which is Parks, and it says, once again, please accept our gratitude for the outstanding staff transportation assistance received during the February 26, 2010 snowstorm. Kevin Wirtz and the park rangers made it possible for Roosevelt Care Center to deliver consistent care to our residents as a result of their efforts. Park rangers provided not only timely and efficient service, but as always, were also professional and courteous beyond expectation. So good job, Field of Delina. Thank you very much. And lastly, um, I would like to report that um, there were reports by freeholders uh, Rios and Scott about this storm uh, we experienced. Uh, I'm part of a committee as, as well as Freeholder Scott here in the county and it's called, the acronym is COOPCOG. And what it is is we try to come up with plans of how to continue government in the event of an emergency. And we have those plans in place and that rainstorm was an emergency and, and I'm gonna read a short statement. As you know, during last week's Nor'easter, many of the county's communities, including New Brunswick, experienced loss of power and communications. During this time, the county data center in the administration building, which is, which is this building, seamlessly switched from normal power to emergency, emergency backup power within seven seconds, as designed. All IT network servers and infrastructures remained in full operation and never experienced one second of interruption or downtime demonstrating that Middlesex County data, data Center is capable of operating in an emergency situation. The county computers were fully functional and were able to provide access to county staff for the performance of emergency operations. Management also had access to all emergency communication systems, including the emergency notification system and email. The remote offices, that would be offices that are off-site, uh, were not fully functional that were not fully functional experienced some downtime due to Verizon's public access network being down as well as lack of power. So kudos to all the hard work that everyone's put in to come up with our county plan of how to respond in the event of an emergency to keep our government operating. That's all I have, okay? On to commemorative resolutions. 
The first is recognizing the Middlesex County Vocational and Technical School at East Brunswick Cheerleaders as they are the 2010 state champions. Next is recognizing the following individuals who are being honored by the Carteret Elks Lodge 2235. Angelo Galino Jr. as he is being installed as exalted ruler. Dennis Damasio will be receiving the Citizen of the Year Award. James P. Hart III is receiving Elk of the Year. Caitlin Murray, who is the, the Elks State Batter Up Champion in the category for girls ages eight through nine and is representing Carteret Elks. And LJ DeLuca is the Elks Batter Up, Elks State Batter Up Champion for the Challenger Division, also representing Carteret Elks. I need a motion. So moved. Second. A motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Freeholder Valente. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett. Yes. Freeholder Delina. Yes. Freeholder Polos. Yes. Freeholder Rios. Yes. Freeholder Scott. Yes. Freeholder Valenti. Yes. Freeholder Director Rafano. Yes. I believe there's going to be a presentation. Yes. We have Deputy a presentation Director. to all our cheerleaders, our uh, coaches, our principal, superintendent. If you all want to come up to the podium over here, are we going to get a cheer too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was a cheerleader when he went to school. You know that, <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> I was just at the uh, Voctec Board of Ed uh, meeting last week as a liaison uh, to the Voctec and the, and the college as chairman of the Health and Education Committee. Uh, they were, our cheerleaders were recognized uh, for their championship. And from what I understand, it was just in a short <clears throat> three year span that, this, that we're in existence, two and a half years. and. Uh, we reach this milestone and how proud we are of all of you for your hard work, your dedication, your sportsmanship, and you really make us proud in Middlesex County. We have a resolution here where, it, where the, uh, I won't go through the whole thing because I don't want uh, to, but I don't want to miss anything. And our, they, our cheerleaders competed on uh, February 20th and at the, Gloucester County Institute of Technology in, in Sewell against several squads from around the state and for, as a first time entrant in the state competition by the, our Middlesex County Vocational Technical Schools, our team captured first place. How tremendous is that? Let's give them a round of applause. So on behalf of all, the board, all our freeholders on the board, I want to congratulate you and I have a resolution for each of you and for our uh, principal and our coach. If coach, if you would like to say something, you're more than welcome to. Congratulations. I think my principal. <laughs> our principal, Jeff Bisco. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank the freeholders for, um, uh, for their support and allowing us to do this. Um, I also want to thank uh, Ms. Sipperly, our our uh, coach and Miss Vela, our, our co-coach, um, but most importantly, I want to thank the, these kids. Um, the hours that they put into this competition was just tremendous. Uh, their dedication to to this program is uh, again it, it's it's testament to what we do in our schools, and um, and I'm so very proud of them, and um, and I thank them for all their work. Hold the trophy up. Yes, hold that trophy up high. <laughs> Get it? There you go. Thank you. Jeff, how are you doing? Fantastic. Okay, good. How was that? Thank you, Freeholder. Correspondence. Each, free, each freeholder has been provided with a list of correspondence received by the clerk's office since our last meeting. This correspondence will be kept on file in the office of the clerk of the board for reference. I need a motion to accept the correspondence. So moved. Second. 
Motion by Deputy Director Real, seconded by Fielder Valente. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Now we need to deviate from the regular order of business for the purpose of conducting one public hearing. Notice of this public hearing was published in the Home News Tribune on March 9, 2010. This public hearing was authorized at a meeting of the Board of Chosen Freeholders held March 4, 2010. Okay, now uh, please read the ordinance by title only. An ordinance amending and restating an ordinance of the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, entitled An Ordinance of the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, approving and authorizing the entering into execution and delivery of a lease and agreement with the Middlesex County Improvement Authority relating to the issuance of Youth Detention Center Lease Revenue Bonds, Series 1996 of the Middlesex County Improvement Authority, and authorizing a public hearing to be held August 15, 1996, at 7 p.m., and authorizing publication thereof to approve and authorize the entering into execution and delivery of an amendment to lease agreement with the Middlesex County Improvement Authority, the authority, for the refunding of the authority's youth detention center lease revenue bonds, series 1997, through the issuance of youth detention center lease revenue refunding bonds, series 2010, of the Middlesex County Improvement Authority, and authorizing a public hearing to be held Thursday, March 18, 2010, at 7 p.m., and authorizing publication thereof. I declare the hearing open. Anyone from the public <coughs> would like to comment on this ordinance? On first call? Second? Third? I need a motion to close. So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rios, seconded by Freelder Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. I need a motion to adopt the ordinance on final reading. So moved. Any second? second? Motion by Deputy Director Rios, seconded by Freelder. Valente, roll call. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Delina? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rufano? Yes. I need a motion to resume the normal order of business. So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rios, seconded by Freeholder Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, Mr. Kelso. Are there any resolutions to be amended? There are none. Any resolutions to be added? There are none. Any resolutions to be held? There are none. You're on a roll. I know. Any resolutions to be voided? There are none. Okay. I need to open the, the uh, meeting up now to public discussion for any resolution items that are on the agenda. And there's a five minute rule. Anybody for the public? Mr. Stewart? Richard Stewart, uh, New Brunswick. Uh, just a question, um, which uh, first, uh, this is uh, more or less, uh, maybe uh, Free Older Scott might know the uh, there was reference on the uh, NJ12 news this past week to a couple of correction officers in one of the other counties making 100000 a year. Of course, that included overtime. Do we have any uh, in that pay range or approaching it? To answer the question, there are those individuals at different levels that are making that with overtime, yes, and some without. There are some making that. Yeah, sure. Could uh, you let me know before the next meeting how many? Yeah, I'm we'll, not we'll concerned with the we'll name. We'll a full list. Yeah. Uh, also, it, uh, I noticed on the uh, personnel report here again, we uh, this with is re with respect to the sheriff's department. A uh, officer going from uh, sergeant up to lieutenant. He was making ninety thousand a year. He's now moving to one hundred and three thousand a year. Uh, I'm curious, really, how these people. Uh, this is straight salary. This is not with overtime. Yeah, went overtime. Uh, Mr. Stewart, that's a contractual um, number. Um, where there was a retirement, and there has to be a chain of command, and, and that person is now filling 
uh, the, the vacancy left by the retirement. Oh yeah, well the, the next one moving up mm -hmm. yeah. from uh, sergeant right. uh, or Yes, he, he, he's moving to the sergeant okay. slot, which was vacated. The sergeant slot was 90,013, and the new one is uh, uh, going into that uh, spot. Uh, I'm just, how many people, uh, and what kind of assignments warrant that pay range? This is something that I think that our new governor is going to have to look at all the way down the line uh, because, as they say, we just can't afford it. They're uh, assigned to a, a variety of locations and a variety of responsibilities and duties. Mm -hmm. um, if you want more detail than that, we can certainly provide that information to you. As we provide the information from corrections to you, we can do that. I'd appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else from the public? Good evening. My name is Jeff Champion. I'm from South Plainfield. And I wanted a little explanation of 10 498. Page 9. You can okay. start and I'll fill in if there's anything. That settlement was related to a contingent concrete uh, contract that was awarded to Hilltown. Uh, we called for a firm price in the bid. You can recall the, when the escalation went through Ron Francis. Mm -hmm. Was six hundred thousand. Right. Okay. Actually, there there is case law that, uh, well, which we did through conferencing through the courts, mm -hmm. and the courts indicated that there were cases that would award in these circumstances, since it was an unforeseen circumstance that the price would increase so dramatically, mm -hmm. even though the contract provides for a set amount, mm -hmm. that they would be entitled to what we refer to as quantum merit relief. Mm -hmm. The actual original claim was for over $600,000. Mm -hmm. We were able, notwithstanding the fact that cases supported them, we were able to negotiate a settlement in, in this amount of $300,821. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically the court uh, split the difference. Well, actually we agreed in a settlement to pay half the amount. Mm -hmm. If the case had actually gone to trial, they would have been likely gotten an award for the entire amount. I see. We're close to it anyway. Okay. Thank you. Any, anybody else in the public? First call. Motion to close. I need a second. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rios, seconded by Freeholder Barrett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Does any freeholder have any resolution that they wish to remove from the consent agenda and vote on separately? Yes. Uh, I do, Freeholder Director, on page six. Resolution 10-473. Okay. Anybody else? 10-511 and 10-498. What was that? 10-511 and 10-498. I also have a question regarding the personnel report, but I don't know what resolution number that is. Anybody else? Margaret, do you okay. know what number that is? Personnel report. Personnel report is 10-455. I have a question on it, Director. I don't know if I want it separated or not, but if, however you want to deal with that. What's the question? Let me pose it now. Yes. I have a question regarding it. Do you want me to pose it now? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. I'm trying to, I don't know if Millie can answer this or maybe you can or John can. 
couple of weeks ago when we talked about the new arrangement with the uh, Corrections Center, I asked for a report to highlight how we were absorbing the $3 million loss from the ICE uh, reduction, which was a reduction of about 200 inmates, and what the impact was on our budget vis-a-vis -vis the new work that we're doing on the shared services. I never got that report, but tonight we're putting on 11 officers for about $600,000 between salary and benefits. I'm trying to understand how we're justifying that or what the I haven't seen any report to justify hiring 11 officers given the fact that we lost 200 inmates less than six months ago. Uh, can I, yeah, can I, yeah. Uh, a couple items that are going on. Number one, as we built the 2010 budget, we took into account that these positions need to be filled, which were uh, vacated by either retirements or people leaving. Um, in the details of the budget by department, by line item, explains both the expenses as well as the revenues uh, that didn't ma materialize in 2009. It's reflected in the 2010 budget that was provided to all the freeholders uh, at the uh, introduction of the budget and also at the preliminary uh, and at the uh, <coughs> preliminary unveiling of the budget. Uh, so all the information is contained in those reports. If you'd like us to summarize that, we can do that. That lays out uh, what we're doing relative to the $6 million shortfall that we've experienced through the loss of the ICE detainees. As you know, we just recently signed an agreement with uh, Monmouth County uh, to basically provide shared services with them uh, in the area of youth services that will generate $2.5 million annually in revenue to the county, but in, nine, in the current year's budget would be $1.25 million. Um, recognizing that, uh, that shortfall, that's all incorporated in the budget. We are currently in negotiations with other counties as well and our hope is that subsequent to the adoption of the budget that the remaining shortfall or a good part of it will be addressed relative to the other shared service agreements that we're trying to work uh, prior to the adoption of the 2010 budget. But as far as the details on, on the shortfall in revenue which reflected in the introduced budget as well as the expense light items, uh, you'll notice that uh, there's a reduction in uh, overtime uh, to the tune of about $1.2 million which is partly offset by the uh, hiring of the additional uh, uh, correction officers. Uh, there's also, uh, uh, like I said, uh, offsetting operational expenses, uh, contractual expenses, because uh, it's based on a per inmate basis. All that's reflected in the numbers. But again, if you want us to provide a summary, I know we can do that for the field. Well, I did ask weeks ago for a report because I think what we really need, that sounds good, but it doesn't really show me when we have a certain number of pods that are filled with a certain number of officers in each pod. And when you eliminate at least one, if not more, pods because of the ICE inmates, to me that means that there's a surplus of officers. The question becomes, we didn't lay off, we didn't furlough, we haven't lost that many in that period of time, so why do we need 11 more to fill for a pod that arguably isn't filled? And the, the $2.1 million that you're talking about that's offset is a juvenile issue, not, a correct, not an adult <coughs> correction center. These are adult correction officers, aren't they? That's correct. Yeah. So, I mean, before we approve, we're in a hiring freeze and we're in a budget crisis, so I guess before we hire 11 officers, shouldn't we have a detailed report that says, here's what we had before, here's the number of inmates that we lost due to the ICE contract breaking, here's the uh, surplus of officers, and here's what we need, and here's our anticipated population? I haven't gotten that report unless somebody else has. Like I said, the information is provided into the budget in great detail. Uh, I would recommend to this board at this point in time uh, that when you look at the hiring, it will clearly offset the unnecessary overtime costs that we're trying to capture, and I'm confident the work that was done by the warden and his team, also the controller, and myself properly reflects the best scenario in order to provide efficient uh, security capabilities at that facility. Uh, that's, I will provide any information you need prior to the adoption, to hopefully satisfy your concerns, but at this point in time, I'm recommending that those positions be filled. Anybody have any questions? I'd like to just respond sure. to that. The uh, hiring of the officers will alleviate the overtime. <clears throat> when officers work overtime, there's also a stress level, a tiredness, and it's a safety issue. So that's why you need the, the officers, and it will alleviate the overtime. The overtime definitely will go down. Well, I'm okay with that, but do you then you know how many officers we actually freed up when ICE broke their contract? Did it free up? It, right. it saved less overtime. It didn't free up. It didn't free up any officers. No officers got freed up. Okay. You're going to see overtime going down as a result of the hiring of officers. All right. I, 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 I don't know if I got the answer to my question specifically. I just thought we had a surplus of officers because we closed pods. Uh, Maybe no. I was mistaken. No. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So we have then, do you still want that read separately? 
Friola? Yeah, I do. Okay. Mr. Kelso? Uh, if I just uh, make sure I had the, the resolutions correctly, that's 10455, 10498, and 10511? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then, uh, for the director, a motion would be in order to adopt the consent agenda consisting of resolution numbers 10 429 through resolution 10 519, excluding resolutions 10 473, 10 455. 10 511 and 10 498 to be voted upon separately. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Freeholder <coughs> Valente. Roll call, please. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Delina? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rafano? Yes. And now a motion would be in order to adopt the resolution which was excluded by Freeholder Valenti, and that's resolution 10-473. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Freeholder Barrett. Roll call, please. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Delina? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Present. Not voting. Freeholder Director Rafano? Yes. And now, finally, if, uh, if the board would, is in agreement, we can consider the three resolutions together that were excluded by Freeholder Polis, and that's resolutions 10 455, 10 498, and 10 511. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rios, seconded by Freeholder Valente. Roll call, please. Freeholder Barrett? Yes. Freeholder Delina? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Well, on 10 498, I'm going to vote no. As the County Council knows, I think that we could have handled that differently. We would have been able to, I think, save that $300,000 if we took the position that due notice wasn't given to us by the contractor. I think we should have fought for the $300,000 instead of just giving in on, this, on a settlement, and we discussed that uh, prior to negotiations. On 10-5-11, uh, uh, consistent with what I said at the last meeting, I don't think we should be doing a $5 million road project right now, given our current budget, until we at least adopt it and realize what type of revenues. We still haven't prioritized our road projects. I don't know what the priority is for the road projects that we need to do for 2010. Uh, and until we see a report like that, I think we're just approving this without really having a, de a definitive uh, timeline or a de definitive priority list. And I just think that we're, that's not prudent. Uh, as far as 10455 goes for the personnel report, um, I'll, I'll vote in favor of it because there are other people on there that I think uh, are you know, required and so forth. And perhaps the corrections officers are too. I'm not questioning their need. And I certainly don't want anything to, anyone to think that I'm questioning the need for corrections officers to have rest. But I think that in the future, before we hire $600,000 worth of employees, we should have a written report that indicates what the actual specific requirements are, the needs are of the department, uh, and an outline of what the cost and benefit is. And I know we didn't receive that in this case, other than the summary in the budget, which did not specifically identify the needs per pod or personnel. So I'm voting no on 498, no on 511, and I'll vote yes on 455 with that explanation. Freeholder, excuse me. Sorry, go ahead. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Scott? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rafano? Yes. Okay. okay, anybody from the public? Yes, sir. Just a question, uh, when is the next budget meeting? Right. Uh, now I'm, we're I'm just waiting for some uh, revenue approval from the state, and uh, hopefully uh, some resolution on some of the uh, contract negotiations are underway. Then we will have the adoption sometime in the April timeframe. Okay. So do you know when that will be posted? At this point, no. But until we get the uh, approval from the state, we really can't put a date in place. Okay. But the last budget meeting was this last Monday, correct? The public hearing was public. March 11th. March 11th. Right. Okay. And can I get a copy of the uh, the 2010 budget? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else from the public? Mr. Stewart. Richard Stewart again. Uh, 
I've expressed interest before about transportation for visitors to the correction center, which I would presume, well, would apply also to the youth uh, facility. Uh, the new budget, is there anything in the new budget dealing with getting the, our buses to go in there rather than just drop people off out at 1.30? I would refer to Field of Polos. No, sir, it wasn't requested by the board that that be included. I know you had suggested that as a possibility. We've actually had a $230,000 state aid cut this year as a result of revenue sharing from the casino revenue funds. Uh, we've tried to make certain uh, service cuts in order to be able to absorb that and hedge against future cuts that we anticipate under the new budget constraints that are being imposed by the governor. Uh, and in order to alleviate, or I should say to modify our route, which comes up 130 and be able to accommodate that, uh, that stopover, we would have to cut that route down significantly because we're literally down to the minute on the route. Um, there might be able to be some modification in the future if we received additional revenues. Um, what I might suggest is, is that uh, as this arrangement materializes with the county corrections and juvenile corrections, it would seem to me to be prudent that both Monmouth and Middlesex keep in mind the needs of the parents and the families that want to visit these kids and be able to carve out a portion of that revenue anticipated to be $20 million to perhaps fund a, uh, an additional link or an additional service to be able to get the parents closer to the juvenile facility. But I, I haven't been included in those discussions, but I certainly would recommend that. The, the, just so you know, the <coughs> transportation element concerning Monmouth, that's up to Monmouth. I think they're discussing possibly providing transportation for their families. Up, up up there. Yeah. What did the administrator say? Monmouth County will be providing transportation for any of the individuals in the facility. Okay, because that was the second right. part of my question, that if you're going to, we're not even taking care of our own, and especially, and I have said before, but I shouldn't have to tell you, the parents haven't committed any crimes uh, that we know of. Uh, so really, uh, it's unfortunate that we can't seem to find, we're running buses all over the place, but we can't run them in just in that driveway, which is not a bad walk, if you like a walk, but it's not very good in rain and it's not very good in cold weather. Uh, still seems to me that a greater effort should be made to deal with that. Uh, and I hope you will come to that point of view at some point. I've got something in mind, another group that might, might be able to get to join me in this concern and maybe you will hear their voice better than mine. Anybody else from the public? And motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Fielder Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Fielder Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Meeting adjourned.